Did you know, in the Clone Wars Season 4 premiere, Water War, the Mon Calamari and Quarren are shown to share the planet of Mon Cala. The first source to establish this fact was the Star Wars sourcebook published in 1987 by West End Games. Tensions between the two species have appeared throughout the expanded universe. The design of the Mon Cala city is meant to remind viewers of the Mon Calamari cruisers in Return of the Jedi. That's because the Mon Cala towers are basically just landed and docked starships. We've since learned that Admiral Radice's ship, the Profundity in Rogue One, was originally a government building. Prince Lee Char's name comes from Charlie, the name of the famous mascot for Starkiss Tuna. Kit Fisto's gunship art features a cartoon bomb with Kit's face on it, and written in Arabesh is Service with a Smile, a reference to Kit's grin in Attack of the Clones. In Gungan Attack, the character of Mina Tills is revealed to be female. Previously, in action figure packaging and expanded universe storytelling, she was thought to be male. Lightsabers should theoretically boil the water surrounding it, but the Mon Cala episodes had to abandon that effect in order to keep production on track. The arrival of the Jedi Cruiser reveals that Mon Cala is in a binary system like Tatooine. In the episode Prisoners, the baton that Akbar carries is an homage to his original 1983 action figure, which had a similar accessory. The Mon Cala prison is a converted legislation chamber. The reason behind this not only saves the expense of creating a new environment, but also shows Riff Tamsin's sensibilities that he turns a democratic office into a dungeon. Kit Fisto's line, Eels, Very Dangerous, is a nod to Raiders of the Lost Ark when Sala says the same thing about asps. Another Spielberg reference is Riff Tamsin's explosive death, which is an homage to the shark's similar death in Jaws. In Shadow Warrior, Boss Lyoni raises the question, what happened to Boss Nass? He's alive and well as seen in Revenge of the Sith, but he's retired. This episode also reveals a secret Sith command center on Naboo, suggesting that Sidious used it himself before the events of the Phantom Menace. Darth Maul's Sith infiltrator was originally meant to be seen parked there, since it was unaccounted for after episode 1. It has since appeared in the Lando comic. Anakin and General Grievous again narrowly miss meeting each other in this episode. From the dialogue they exchange in Episode 3, it's clear that Anakin and Grievous never met face-to-face -face during the Clone Wars. In Mercy Mission, we see yet another new look for Commander Wolf. Dave Filoni, who loves wolves, chose a helmet similar to the one worn by Commander Neo in Episode 3 because it best suited the design of the wolf emblem. The Alina species can actually be seen riding cancels on Kashyyyk in Revenge of the Sith. In the episode Nomad Droids, 3PO and R2 are tied up by a tiny species called Petites. The Petites are very similar to the Brownies from the Lucasfilm movie Willow, even down to their French accents. In Darkness on Umbara, Rex's helmet receives an upgrade that is a mix of his old helmet and the episode 3 style clone helmet. Barriss Afi and Ahsoka can both be briefly seen in the space battle during the opening narration of the episode, so they were both part of the Umbaran campaign. The ATRTs have 501 stenciled onto their sides. Fives' helmet has a stylized Rishi eel painted on it, in tribute to the creature that attacked his unit in the season 1 episode, Rookies. In the episode The General, the helmets worn by Umbaran soldiers feed them a potent gas mixture that keeps them amped up for combat, increasing their reflexes and aggression. It also allows for one animation model to be created for the entire military. Umbarans have been seen in Star Wars before. Medici and Sly Moore are both Umbaran. Pongkrell was not the first Basilisk Jedi Master to be designed for the series. Unfortunately, Master Plun Kill was simply never seen. The arrow on Sergeant Apo's helmet is a nod to the character Appa from Avatar The Last Airbender, which Dave Filoni previously worked on. In Plan of Descent, a dirigible-shaped Separatist ship can be seen over Umbara. It was actually an abandoned Episode 3 starship design. The clone Z-95 Headhunters are a salute to the ships that first appeared in Han Solo at Star's End in 1979, and visually shown for the first time in 1988's Tatooine Manhunt. However, this canon version is meant to resemble the X-Wing less, since the ARC-170 is meant to be its true precursor. 
The design of the Umbaran starfighters was meant to suggest that Umbaran technology is more advanced than most of the galaxy. Fives' conversation with Krell via Comlink is an homage to Han Solo's similar conversation to stall Imperial investigation in A New Hope. In Carnage of Krell, Waxer's helmet has a cartoon drawn on it. It's meant to be a tribute to Numa, the young Twilight girl he met on Ryloth, who we later see grown up in Star Wars Rebels. An entire Umbaran alphabet was created for use in the Umbaran arc. Krell's lightsabers offer a new twist on the double-bladed design, hinges. The episode Kidnapped is the first installment of a three-part arc that adapts the comic series Slaves of the Republic by Dark Horse. The Zygerian slave ship Takora was named after a Portuguese slave ship from the early 1800s. The interior of the Takora was influenced by the interfaces seen in Luke Skywalker's Tatooine garage. In the episode that's actually titled Slaves of the Republic, the design of the slave processing facility was first created for the Season 1 Ryloth episodes for an idea that was cut. Anakin's salute to R2-D2 is a symbolic salute to Luke Skywalker's salute in Return of the Jedi. Hopefully you did know that one. In Escape from Kadavo, the chairs seen in the control room are reused models from the Trandoshan slave ship in Season 3. One of the display screens reads in Arabesh, Zygerian News. This afternoon, two tourists from Alderaan died in a speed bike accident. Obviously, they spent too much time in the cantina in Mos Eisley. The HH-87 Starhopper design used by the Zygerians is based on concept art for the Imperial shuttle developed for Return of the Jedi. In the episode A Friend in Need, Pre Vizsla's helmet was updated to help him stand out as the leader of Death Watch. The original draft of the story had the alien village made up of Yarkorans, or the Yak Face aliens from Return of the Jedi. This episode features the first appearance of Bo Katan and her Night Owls. Karlak was originally meant to be another desert planet, but Dave Filoni suggested it have Japanese cherry blossoms as its predominant look instead. Death Watch itself receives an update this episode as well. George Lucas wanted them to have a more biker gang feel rather than be such a clean, crisp army. In the episode Deception, the seedy Coruscant bar is a very redecorated interior of Zero's throne room from the Clone Wars movie. The senators present at Obi-Wan's funeral are all wearing existing outfits that were just colored black. The race of the snake-like bartender is simply known as Anacondon. The Republic prison, first seen in Season 3, is the Star Wars version of the Panopticon, a proposed prison design from the 18th century built around the concept that all prisoners could be monitored at any given time. Obi-Wan uses the name Ben while undercover, which is an obvious reference to A New Hope. Reiko Hardeen's helmet design was based on an old Rebel Trooper concept from Return of the Jedi. Boba Fett and Cad Bane's prisoner numbers 32 and 22 were chosen because their Hasbro action figures held those numbers as well. In Friends and Enemies, Reiko Hardeen gets a new helmet design at a pawn shop, this one based on early Boba Fett concepts done by Ralph McQuarrie. Also found in that shop is a very familiar looking fedora. Moralo Eval's armored chest piece is the same design worn by General Veers, Dingar, and Snowtroopers. The luxury 3000 space yacht used by Hardeen is based on the Lady Luck, Lando Calrissian's ship in Legend Stories. The design of the Junker is based on the Houndstooth, Bosk's ship that was originally created for Shadows of the Empire products back in 1996. Inside the saloon in the episode is a poster for Sebulba, which says he'll be signing autographs on Saturday at 10 a.m. The Ithorian bartender required that a translator had to be designed for him to speak in basic. In the episode The Box, Yoda warns Anakin, if you leave, help him you could, which is very similar to advice he gives Luke in The Empire Strikes Back. The character Kira Swan is a nod to Kira Knightley's Elizabeth Swan character in the Pirates of the Caribbean movies. She is said to have been a two-time winner of the Obsidian Sphere, which is also a reference to Jack Sparrow's ship, The Black Pearl. Daron's design comes from the artwork done for an unused cantina alien from Episode 4. Originally, it was supposed to be liquid and not gas that filled the chamber in the box, but budgetary constraints required they use gas instead. In Crisis on Naboo, the fireworks and holographic display was meant to describe the history of Naboo, 
Showing the crash of the Grismalt colony ship, Quilon's discovery of the world, and a nomadic tribe venturing into the Gallo Mountains. The tribe arrives at the Dija Peak, settling there and developing a farming community. The final image shows the growth of their city, which would one day be known as Theed. Also hidden within the fireworks is a Republic cog and yellow receding text that resembles the opening scroll of the Star Wars films. The overlook where the Chancellor's address takes place is located here on the Theed Palace. In the episode Massacre, Dooku orders Grievous to wipe the witches out, all of them. This is very similar to Darth Sidious's command prior to the Battle of Naboo. The graveyard of the Night Sisters is meant to resemble the actual trees found in Dathomirian forests. They hang their mummified dead in a pod of animal skins that resemble the pods that hang from living trees. Asajj Ventress's new bounty hunting look includes an illustration of a black snake, chosen because of the animal's misunderstood nature. Dengar is shown in this episode as being in his prime, in relatively intact armor, suggesting time has really taken its toll when we see him again in The Empire Strikes Back. The four-part mouth of the Belugan species is based on the mouth structure and baleen of a whale. The name of Imbo's pet Anuba, Marok, was based on the Arthurian knight who was transformed into a wolf. This episode is meant to reveal that Dengar's head wrap is a turban and not bandages. The episode Brothers begins with an opening red logo in tribute to Darth Maul. The design of Morley was meant to resemble a hand puppet. Maul's cyborg form in the season 4 finale Revenge was first defined in illustrations for a 2005 graphic novel, Star Wars Visionaries. Thanks for watching today. Hopefully you learned something new about the Clone Wars or Star Wars. If you want to see some of my other trivia videos like this one, check out this playlist here. If you haven't already, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and consider checking out my Patreon page. As always, thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you.